This is the Camwex AM Tower, and it pumps out 50,000 watts of RF. Camwex is a station that's been around for almost 100 years. They're one of the first news talk stations that did it 24-7. And my dad has a special history with this tower. Yes, I do. 20 years uh, watching over this guy. One of my first uh, duties here at KMOX, we put this tower up. We took the old one down and put this new one up. So behind my tripod is the, uh, the building with the transmitter and everything. And then underground, the pipe leads over here to this building. What is this building called? Uh, this building is called the ATU or the antenna tuning unit. So inside of it is uh, enough uh, components to match the antenna to the feed coming to the antenna. So the antenna being the tower, as opposed to FM, where the antenna is a device that hangs on a tower, uh, this whole tower is the antenna. So you, you match it with capacitors and inductors, basically, inside the building. Underneath the uh, base here, there's a big copper screening and uh, inside in a ring of, of uh, copper strap. And then from that, the radials go out in every direction. It's a single tower system. Even if it was a multi-tower array, every tower has the uh, uh, ground plane is built to be circular around the base of the tower. And then if this tower is an antenna and it has 50,000 watts, how do you do things like light, light bulbs on it? Well, if you see the cable carrying the 50,000 watts, that cable with the loop in it, it bonds to the tower. So right away, the tower's got all the RF. But that cable is a hollow tube. So inside the tube is where we run the cabling to take care of the lighting. There is a, uh, they call them an Austin ring transformer. We'll see that in there too. So it isolates the power feed from the building to the power feed to the tower lights because ultimately the lights are also grounded to the tower. I also noticed there's a bunch of weird contraptions. Like there's this weird little thing with two balls on it and there's like a little gappy thing over here with insulators. And it looks like something out of a movie, like talking about Tesla or something. What yes. are those things for? Uh, they help direct lightning energy away from the ATU components. So you've got the ball gap here uh, that can direct lightning to the ground. The ball gap is interesting too because if you get it too close together, it might be more effective in, uh, in transferring energy from lightning strikes, but it also might change the impedance look of the tower. And if you get them too far apart, if the tower becomes more stable in, in its measurement or whatever, but the uh, uh, effectiveness of the gap it goes away. And then there's a there's a loop there. I know for some things you have like a water drip loop, but I'm assuming yeah. that might well, not be for water. Well, water, number one, you do, you always want to have a water drip loop. You want to have the water that's coming down off the tower and not have a chance to get in the building. But it's like one last loop. I was told the uh, impedance, uh, you know, a loop causes a little more impedance. Is there anything special you have to do with a fence like this around a tower like this? I would say you're kind of trying to make it electrically disappear and not be dangerous at the same time. We had the fence post uh, buried and, and uh, they came up and each post had to be bonded and they even carried the bonding up to the uh, uh, security wire at the top. It creates a uh, condition where it's safe. And then stuff like that gate pole, that's just your 50 kilowatt station. Uh, that pole is grounded and I can still get an arc off of a floating gate from grounded on one side, grounded a pole here. And I think you're just seeing a little energy every once in a while. The big brown thing there is the porcelain insulator. You, you know, if you figure that's a tower has energy, you can't ground it you'd be just shorting out all the energy. So that floats the tower above the earth ground so that it can actually transmit. And there's a lot of weight <laughs> pulling down on that too. There is a imagine, lot of weight. I mean, I, I've seen toilets that can hold a 300 pound person, yeah. and I would imagine that has to be even stronger than that. Yeah, same principle. However they make and bake that stuff and the thickness, the science of that keeps that tower off the ground. And I notice even the doghouse has these little grounding straps around it. Yeah, the room is grounded inside. There's also a gated uh, area. It's like not safe on the on the other side of the gate, safe uh, to be there. You know, you don't want to live out here. You wouldn't want to put up a shack and get a Coke and sit around with your buddies hanging out inside this room. But it, it's safe enough for work as long as you stay out of the internal gates. I think I can hear Camo X in here. Is there a tuner inside the building? Uh, no, but there is energized copper energy so it's just making that, sound. That much power inside of here that you can hear the signal. And look at this. There's an old uh, <laughs> an old crank phone on the yes. wall here. Yeah, at one time in a battery pack there. Uh, Mel, is it lunchtime yet? You bring it down and get the barbecue going? Here I see an ammeter here that looks like 
we're definitely in the zone of like, yeah, don't sit here for too long. <laughs> well, this is the uh, ammeter that is telling us the uh, common point current if, if for people who know AM with directionals and things, but there is only one point in a single tower. So that's the antenna current, uh, which is a licensed level that you uh, can't exceed by such a percent or, or you don't want to be under it by such a percent. And uh, it's measuring from a device that is mounted inside so the whole of the energy going to the tower goes through that. And if you wanted to start, you could start at the end and go backwards, but you could also start over here where the, where the energy comes in. So you could see the cables coming in from, from uh, out, it's actually outside, they've got a concrete barrier. Uh, the cables come from underground and they go to a switch there so we can choose which cable coming from the building that we're gonna use on the air. And from that, every component out here the task of all of these coils and capacitors is to tune the signal to the tower so all the energy is as much as possible goes that way and uh, with the, at the right current. What are these giant coils of wire? That is a coil. That's exactly what it is. It's a coil in, in uh, electronics. You have them in your cell phones and everywhere. They're, they're I've never inductors. seen one quite that big. I think I'd that's have to have a car to carry around my cell phone if I had one of those. That's a big one. You want them clean enough to perform perfectly. You know, you don't want them to get them where there's grunge on them or, or how about nesting of animals and <laughs> things like that. So. <laughs> so here we have like snakes and spiders are the biggest thing that we've ever had. And a snake is rare, spiders are less rare. Yeah, we had a, one of those, you know, pow off the air moments <laughs> that was like, what was it? And started looking around and eventually got out to here and found the mouse right up there against the uh, uh, area where the cable comes out, crawling around and dead. That's why we got the gate here, the fence here. <laughs> Another part that is really fascinating me is this big dual disc thing yes. over here. So that is a open air transformer, right? So power comes from the building into the windings of this uh, part of the transformer. They're drawn into the other part, you know, the magnetic field and induction and so forth. So you get the AC power and it goes into that box right there. So now you've got AC going into that box and that copper tube coming out the top carries the 50 kilowatts, because you can see it connected over there, but it carries the 50 kilowatts out because of the bonding at, up there a uh, high. But inside is the tube is the voltage coming from the Austin ring transformer. And it goes out to the tower and comes through the tube into an electrical box. Uh, and that's, so, that's so this the way is that for like the lights? That's for the tower lights, yeah. Okay, so there's, there's an AC power signal here. It <laughs> floats inside of the cavity okay. with the RF. So the RF is a, a, a 1.12 megahertz and the uh, electricity is 60 hertz. You can also see we ducked in some uh, fiber optic cables uh, that we bring over that gets us oh, signaling. Yeah. That gets us signaling off the uh, off the tower light equipment out there that tells us uh, the fault conditions of the lights. So those go into the box here and yeah. then they go inside that tube. They go tube. inside the tube and out to the thing and they, okay. they break out there, the optics break out to, to closure uh, things, they send it back through the fiber. Before we had the idea for the fiber optics, I actually hung a, uh, uh, a, a Wi-Fi type box from around 2002 or three and it was talking to a Wi-Fi box up there. We put it in and tested it with the station off, of course, because it had to be in there. As soon as we turned the station on, it worked for like five minutes. <laughs> Came back out, looked at it. That is the antenna of that <laughs> unit right there. That's the <laughs> antenna. There's another huge coil over here. Yeah, that's called a static drain coil. And I don't know how many, sta I've seen AMs with and without them, but it's a uh, static drain. It's just, it's tied right to the uh, RF cable. Uh, and all it's doing is trying to help you in a condition when the tower is built up static. You know, that wind blows creates an amount of static. The, the box back there with all the wires coming into it and the little like seesaw. Yeah. 
Is that a switch of some sort? Yes, it is. It's an RF switch. That looks like an 80 amp or there. That's a newer one. It actually is mainly meant to ground the tower when the, this is not the tower that's on the air. Oh, so if it goes offline, you can switch that and the tower's grounded, you yeah, can't build up charge. See, there's these, uh, these big straps. Are those for if you need to do service? You have yeah, to if you get a service on. for safety, you literally will clip that to the uh, coming off the tower uh, coming out of the uh, transmitter, like wherever your safety point is, depending on what you're doing, and you'll clip that to ground. And there's a lot of ground spots in here, so <laughs> you, you shouldn't have any trouble finding one. Uh, and, and again, I've seen guys, that, and to tower too, you can, you can take and go to the uh, arc balls out on the tower, and you can clamp to it, bonding spot, clip around, and then clamp down, and you're basically uh, taking the tower to ground that way too, if you want to. That's a, arc, a spark detector. Huh. So it's kind of fun that you have a spark detector. Uh, you could take those, uh, you know, the guys who do acetylene torches and things, you have those little things you squeeze. And yeah, yeah. Those, yeah, you could take one and hold it in there and squeeze it as kind of testing to see if that detects. And what and, would it do if it uh, found a spark? Well, it would send out a, a closure out that thing, which again goes down over up to the remote control up there and tells us that a spark was detected. Unlike some sites, there's an auxiliary backup tower right yeah, there. I mean, you have a spare tower so, sitting there, yeah. So right, if, if you turn that tower on and this one's off, could this tower receive the signal and like yeah, blow everything up? It actually up? would receive a lot of the signal. In fact, <laughs> when we were working on the tower a couple of different times, we have to you, you actually go to the base of the tower and you clamp on some of these components and you tune them to, to <laughs> draw down energy or float the tower, make the tower invisible to that tower. So there's a, there's a tower here, but as we were walking back, I noticed, Dad, that there's a garage door above your head. That doesn't seem like the best place for a garage door. Can you explain why, yeah. why that door exists on this building? Well, so uh, the original transmitter that went in here, uh, power supply was in the lower level transmitter was at the upper level it was brought in in parts where they got a new transmitter could not get it into the stairwell and up the steps uh, where it was going to be installed and so in uh, thinking of options they ended up cutting out the brick and installing a garage door unit here so that they could uh, fork that thing up and get it into the building and since then it's been used like a dozen times for <laughs> air conditioners, new transmitters, and other big items. We also noticed there's a scrap heap over here, but you said it's more of a his history lesson. <laughs> yeah, well, part of it is, uh, you can see things like the racks that we took out in the past. We've removed some stuff, it's a lot of metal. And then uh, back here, you've got these pieces. They were built, uh, they literally supported the tower for the period when we replaced the insulator at the base. When it was cracked, uh, we clamped these things to the tower and they basically made a, uh, a movable uh, section on the tower, a clamped on the tower and then based on the ground with threaded rod between them and they would move those threaded rods up and down. And There's this massive concrete thing. Yeah, so this, uh, like the other one, since they added the underground at some later time from the original construction. There's another one the, right here. The, the cables come out they come out of the building, curve down, they go underground and they go out to the tower. So this is the, uh, the protective uh, shield, if you will, for those cables. And that is the tower that was put up in 1947. That's the base of the old tower with the pin, with the tower set on top of that. And then the new one, this is the uh, top where the tower sets on top. So you can see the exhaust of the generator and then you got an intake air so that generator can run. And then I noticed this uh, satellite dish over here. You have a cover on it. Is it not in use? That's a uh, cover for snow. Uh, if a satellite dish builds up too much snow or ice on it, it deforms the shape and you lose signal. And if you lose too much signal, you lose but, the satellite signal. But the cover would block the signal. The cover does not block RF, right? So uh, that's the main thing is it's like if you had clothes on, you held your heart, it, it'll jump through the clothes. It'll jump through that stuff. This is the PEP world that uh, in the FEMA uh, planning, at some point in the last 20 years, they came up with uh, creating EMP-proof buildings, putting a generator in one and broadcast equipment in the other, locating them at the various uh, PEP stations so that they can, uh, uh, if they had to, all of this would work after the EMP waves came through 
and they could get it on the air, 6,000 gallons, keep it running for 30, 40, 50, I don't know how many days, but a lot of days. And uh, they have the engineers at the sites do some of the checks throughout the year, and then they send a guy out every once in some while. So do they have a signal that goes out to the tower? There's cables going into the building, like the fuel. That fuel also uh, goes to the generator in the building because that would be the first preference is if they yeah. can stay on the air, like if it was an earthquake, the tower could be up and this building could be worked, but the power would be out for the whole area. So in an earthquake scenario, if KMWEC can stay on the air with its main tower, that's the best. Uh, 50,000 watts here, uh, under 10 kilowatts out of that uh, uh, building over there. There's an air compressor over there. The air compressor keeps those door seals. So what, what would the door seal. seals be good for? A pressurized seal is gonna be better for everything from the environmental inside the building to if they have uh, RF mesh stuff in the inside of that, uh, the door seal. It's keeping out seal spiders, that giant keeping spiders. Keeping out spiders. So this is the transmitter building, but this is more than just a transmitter building. Do you, can you give a quick history of what this whole building is? Well, it's, it was also at one time, you know, they used to have a full-time operator here to manage the audio levels coming from the studio uh, to the transmitter. Say so the transmitter operators, audio guys, there'd be two or three guys here around the clock a lot of times. It, it, the transmitter itself was a thing to just keep running. It, the transmitter power supply was down in the basement. The big blower system is, they had a big air filtration system with bag filters on it. Uh, and then uh, nowadays, it's all the transmitting stuff is done upstairs. When something blew, you know, you, you had uh, parts on hand, you would make a coil or you would adapt something uh, as needed. And so they had a full shop here. Can we head on inside and yeah. see what's in there? Yes, we will. You can see the shop stuff that's been put down here. We got a drill press there. They had parts here. Uh, but back here was a blast room. So a little room where they could communicate. They had a radio. Uh, they still have some batteries down there. You can, you know, if you get over here, you can see. So batteries to run radios, a turntable. And this is the generator room here. So you, you've got... Uh, it's going to be loud, it sounds like. Yeah, that's... It's funny, but oh, that that's the, the that's compressor. Up, up there. Yeah, that's the compressor huh. to keep the lines pressurized going out to the tower. Okay. Uh, as with a lot of uh, facilities that have been around a while, some of the things you see are related to this happened in the 60s, this happened in the 80s, this happened in the year 2000s. We've got a big transfer switch. <laughs> yeah, there's a transfer switch. That's one of three. So each transfer switch is handling a particular load. One is the building load, and one is for the main transmitters, and one is for the backup transmitter. Is, um, that, is that a supercharger that I see on the front? Turbocharger, turbo yeah, a little turbo. It's a turbocharged yeah. diesel generator. Yeah, so the air flows this way. So the air comes into the room here, it yeah. goes over the engine and then there's exhaust for yes. the, that, but yeah. the exhaust for the engine itself is here, yeah. goes up. So this room is kind of interesting. Lots of things flow through it that are super hypercritical for the operation. This whole room is just different. And so I, I, it's, it's an added uh, room and you'll see why here we come in. It's uh, oh, I see the, uh, the RF going out there. Yeah, so here's that pole outside. We had the, uh, concrete barrier protecting it. You can see the water goes in. One cable goes to the aux tower, main, and the main cable that we splice. These cables go to the tower. So you can see this pipe goes down with that one. That cable comes out, that cable goes down. So these cables are all, they give us pairs of wires into the building. And of course, over time, a ton of those cables will fail due to some reason or another over 40, 50, 60 <laughs> years. And these two were put in before the aux tower. Mm -hmm. So again, everybody, you have to decide like, well, if I was building new and I knew I had an aux tower, would I put that in? And then over here is at the third transfer switch. But these transformers are taking 480 down to 240 for some of the panels in the building and, and some of the equipment. Uh, and the transmitters can take 480 so they don't have to go through these transformers. Uh, so you've got all of that going on in this room. You got the main panels. So here's Illinois power, and this is the generator power. So power supplied by the generator. So both of them come in, and of course they both feed. So you've got you know ins and outs uh, going to the different panels where they're needed, based on whether there's emergency power running uh, to that space. You can also see right there where it goes to the flex cable that goes underground, we transition uh, to air, pressurized air into these cables. So you can see where the cables come in, they go into the uh, 
room up there to the uh, dehydrator. And is that the same kind of coax as you'd have at the FM sites? Yes, that's three inch coax, same stuff. And it handles more power on lower frequencies. So, you know, we have two panels. Uh, each panel is on a different ATS uh, switch, transfer switch. So we got one transmitter, one of the big 50 kilowatts on there, one of the 50 kilowatts there. That way if a transfer switch uh, blows or has to be replaced, the other one is still serviceable and working just fine. This whole area here was the power supply room for the original transmitter. But it had uh, bag filters like this, you know, bag filters all across here just to keep the power supply room cool. Mm -hmm. It had a ginormous fan sitting over here. So here's the motor yep. base. Yeah, and then the power pieces were all popped in here. There was a lot of stuff up above. You can see where things uh, uh, have been taken out. A lot it seems of like that's a theme in a lot of these tower sites is they were built back when you needed like yeah. four yeah. rooms <laughs> for one transmitter. Now yeah. it's like you just got one rack. Yes, and so. you're lucky like here, uh, for the first 10 years I was here, we, it, it took a long time where it made sense to take pieces out. You know, sometimes you found a guy who says, I take old motors, I'll take them and I do this. Um, other times you had a project and you would cut, you know, you just, you just have to find reasons to make sense to take the old stuff out. I see over here too, there's a fun little, uh, this looks like a remote, a remote control. Yeah, that was uh, Alec yeah, Kane and Alec Kane and Friends, that's a remote control. <laughs> and uh, it, it literally, uh, you calibrated uh, each input. So yeah, you could go in and you see you got raise, lower, local when you didn't want the guy at the studio to turn something on while you're working on it. <laughs> so what are all these? Uh, it looks like there's a tower light there. Yeah, so there's enough parts here to test, test a tower system, a tower light uh, on the ground. There's a couple of spare bulbs. These mount inside of these cabinets. So that's a tower bulb. So this is, flashes. yeah, so this is the flasher. So inside here they are the mounts for these kind of things. This is this one that goes with this guy. So that mounts inside. Are those LEDs? Up, up on the tower, they are not LEDs. No. These are uh, flash, flash bulbs in that, uh, I don't know if that's Xeon or whatever, whatever the gas is. Xeon. They are, they are totally built to flash, flash, flash. So it's like build up uh, voltage, charge, current, and flash. Build it again, flash. So what are these weird looking contraptions? These so yeah, things. these are vacuum switches, which is great because you don't get any uh, on the connection. The switching connections don't have any uh, open Arcing. air oxygen and, and whatever else is in there, bugs crawling. So you would connect your RF source here and then this one would switch, you get it come out there. This one would switch it, come out there. And that looks like an FM tower over there. Is that yeah, the, so we have, is that we the have old F one? Yeah, we have an FM antenna over here so this one came off of a tower that we owned uh, this is full power this this would be it's a two bay you can see two bays bay one and bay two it's an eri antenna yeah, they called them rototillers you can kind of see why <laughs> right is that a tv antenna up there that one with all the little ovals no those are uh, uh two-way radios that we used to oh, use okay. uh, we were licensed on the 450 band and the 160 band uh, for broadcast. And then what are these giant circular dishes? Yeah, these, these were our microwaves. So we, we also were licensed on 950 to, uh, to broadcast to, uh, from studio to transmitter. So a lot of these, like these are also uh, 950 dishes. So it would be, uh, one would be on a tower like we have here and it would shoot back downtown and hit the uh, receiver on top of a roof of a building or wherever. But look <laughs> at this thing. So you guys that know what, uh, what goes here, so that's the rubber puck, right? <laughs> so the rubber grades. puck is now that without anyone touching it for probably 30 years maybe. This was a talent clock where you would sit in front and you could do uh, your show, your recording, and it gave you a way to listen to different things and uh, hit you know, the, uh, <laughs> your profanity delay. <laughs> this would be hung up, clamped to the tower, and then the guy wire would leave off of this end here. And why is that important? Uh, this is an insulated material, so this is not steel or metal of any kind. It's is that why you're not transmitting through the guy wires? That's right. That helps keep energy off the guy wires. That's a good thing to get that signal out. <laughs> and the guy wires are also broken up by uh, insulators. When they have a uh, the guy wire coming out, it will go through here and back, and then the next guy wire will go through here and that way. So these are also isolators for the guy wire. So you can break up instead of having a 200 foot guy wire that could re-radiate energy. 
you break it up by putting these guys in of the appropriate size with the tension and all that stuff you want. And then these kind of guys are what go through there and then they wrap, they literally wrap. And once they're wrapped, they're tough. Like so there's no bonding, that, welding, nothing. You just wrap at the, these at around. At the, uh, the Arecibo radio dish, they had that kind of thing set up to hold the radio dish and those all failed. Is yeah. there any kind of inspections that you guys have to do for guy wires over the no, years? No, but uh, you can see one. You see, this one is set up like it's just perfect for demo. But see how there's no connection between the guy wire going that way and the guy wire going this way. Mm -hmm. And you literally, this, this is strong enough. Well, you wrap this around the guy wire and, and it will not tug loose. So the second level here looks a lot, like very well maintained. Very and I just noticed there's actually, there's a bathroom with stalls. Yes, we have a, <laughs> well, we have a stall and we have a shower. Oh, wow. So, uh, that's the most premium tower site I've ever seen in my <laughs> yeah, life. It's very nice. Shower it's very nice. in the bathroom. Modification city. This is again, the kind of stuff that happens. So you can close all this up, but uh, you can see the original panel was huge. For some reason, a panel change out happened. So this is the transmitter room. Yeah. And I'm it, guessing that it didn't used to be this quiet. Yeah, no, it, well, it's, it's still noisy to me, but it's much quieter than some. <laughs> this is that current transformer I tell you about that gives us the reading, the uh, 50 kilowatts uh, connection, the RF flows through this, it gives us a reading. And these get go back and get calibrated and then put back in, they have a paired meter. Since we're high up off the ground, we do have some storage here, you know, because it's never going to get wet. Hopefully, the roof wouldn't leak. When I started, the main transmitter was here. You could see the floor area. That was the main DX50. The old MW50 ran all the way. You can see where the tile is discolored there. So the DX50 and associated racks ran all the way across here. So we put in the uh, transmitter over here, the 3DX. Uh, that's 50 kilowatt transmitter. We put that in and we put new racks in. At the time, we only put one rack and an HD rack. So we put in the, the rack that matches there for HD radio. The next rack was for our intercommunication equipment and so forth. And then we got a new remote control system. We put that in over here, uh, the new remote with uh, complete. We did everything into one rack. And then uh, we had other accessories, the security system and, and monitoring and things going to that rack. So all of these, uh, things that happened over different time. Uh, when I was, the 20 years I was here, the one focus I had was trying to make this room smaller uh, so that we could keep it clean and cool and still get work done and, and get rid of that door being a part of the air that comes in and out. So, so you can see now we've, we've basically made the whole room only need to be about this big. Uh, yeah. And then you have that uh, blower there, that old blower. Okay, that's a dummy load. You can throw 50 kilowatts in it, turn on the blower, and it blows that air out. And, uh, and you can test a 50 kilowatt transmitter. So there's a transmitter over here that says TX1. Yeah. And that's a Harris, what is it? Uh, Harris, they call it the Harris 3DX50. And then over here, there's TX2, which is the same thing? Yeah, it's like a twin. Both of them are capable of HD. And then over there, I saw TX3. Yeah, that's, a, that's like the, Doomsday third transmitter. It's small. Uh, I think it's like a six kilowatt. So, and the site was built to have three transmitters, and so the company let us buy a third one. We got to see inside the FM transmitters, and yeah. it just had a bunch of like modulars or something. How is the AM? Oh, this setup? is really going to excite you because <laughs> when you open the door here, this is the RF section. It's a bunch of modules, but at 50 kilowatts, it's an awful lot. And if you could look. You can see that the lights that are glowing, some are blinking, some are on a little more steady, and some look like they're on all the time. The way this system works is each module, if you look at it like a block, uh, as you modulate, they turn the blocks on and off, and they add, and they create the waveform. It made AM transmitters so efficient that people could change the transmitter, and the electric savings were so great, it paid for the cost of the transmitter fairly quickly. Fans are in the back of this housing, and you can see all the fins, that air just coming straight out. The modulation system sends data into these things, which turns the uh, units on and off as needed. So it's all a serial data system. I keep seeing these little Xilinx, these FPGAs. Yeah, yeah. Looks like these transmitters, they don't make enough of them to make it worth building their own yes, chip. All, yes. So they yes. literally build like a prototype on each transmitter. Yeah, in broadcast, you'll see those some consoles and other things they use as Xilinx chips. All over the place, there's camera here, 
camera down here, yes. camera up here. So what's all these cameras for? I mean, we're in a secure place. When you're not here and things are going on or you have work going on, or you just want to see the light pattern here because the remote control, maybe it was not making sense. You have a phase out or some weird thing happening. So it's great uh, in, the, in the case of this camera system here, we also had some cameras from a building we moved out of. So then you're like, well, if we got the system and we can put them in, let's do it. This is exhaust. Oh. So it sucks in. If you go around the back, we'll see where it's sucking the air in, blowing through. But this is the exhaust. And you've got the uh, cool air feedback there. So on this one, we did, we deflected the air to keep it away from the, what we wanted to happen was cold air flush the back and warm air gets sucked out, uh, you know, up higher in the air. It draws in through those filters. So that it has its feed line come out here just like the FM sites. Yep. And it comes yeah, down here. Yeah, so you here. got the same thing. You got switches. Because there's three transmitters and two towers, a little more switching goes on. But if you follow them, you'll find that this transmitter is either going to go this way or that way. And if it goes this way, it goes to this switch. And if it goes this way, it goes to that cable which goes around and out. Remember that hole in the wall downstairs? Yep. These are the cables going down and in the wall. What is this big box here? I see a couple cables come into it. Yeah, so this, this box was built when we got HD and it was to help the uh, transmitter match uh, more broadly. I kind of think of it as like what we, an EQ and audio. It was like EQing the RF specifically to make it a flatter RF uh, signal. And then I see another cable coming up here. What is this one for? So that one goes to the dummy load. So this is a dehydrator. It has a, a desiccant pumping system in there, so it sucks air, dries it out as much as it can, and it sends it out. Uh, you can see these are the tubes we we're talking about sending air into the lines that are underground. And this is where that originates. And you could have a tank here and take this and, and hook it up to a regulated tank, but these are super reliable. This guy runs 24 seven, whenever he needs to, he kicks on. So that's the pressure in the line right now is a little over four pounds. So three to six is kind of the target. And the settings are in there to give you the window you like. And what, what's the importance of keeping the moisture out and the pressure in? Well, the pressure, so anytime you have a cable, uh, you don't want water, liquids, bug, dust, nothing to get inside of those uh, uh, cables, So in a, especially underground. So if you have pressure on it, anything's going to want to go out. It's not going to want to come in. Is yeah. there a lot more loss in an elbow because it's doing that 90 degree turn? There is loss in every elbow, and it's, uh, they, they measure it, calculate it and we put it in our calculation. So if you follow the path when this is on the air and you wanted to get your maximum RF allowed power to deliver to the antenna, you're gonna figure in the loss through the filter and the loss through every elbow, the loss through every joining connector. They all have little tiny losses, but you're gonna add them all up because you want that last 50 watts or yeah. 300 watts. There's a bunch of hard drives is, it, is there like a, the ability to run everything off-site here? Too? Yeah, so you can run your whole, the whole uh, radio format can be handled out here. Uh, that drive is saving all the commercials and so forth that KWAX uses, the shows. Uh, it's, a, it's mirrored to here through the network. Because so. you, got, you got a super micro server there along with a disk shelf yeah. underneath. Yeah. And UPSs on every rack, so I yeah. imagine Besides the transmitters, do, are the transmitters battery backup too, or just? No, the transmitters are not, uh, but they're built to kind of, they're designed to know that they're gonna have outages. So, you know, the whole thing here with the UPS is it's designed because there's a generator, and the generator takes up all power. There's nothing in here that isn't on generator power eventually. So the three switches. So these UPSs are there for that 10 seconds. So yep. if they have five or 10 minutes of battery power, that's plenty. There's a lot of Burke boxes here. Are those yeah. remote controls for all the different connections? Or yeah, something? so every, every uh, transmitter, you're gonna turn it on, you're gonna turn it off, you want the forward power, reflected power, the other readings, you want the status. That's just for the transmitters. <clears throat> then you've got like a switch to switch which antenna and which transmitter are live. So you wanna do that remotely. There's a lot of control switching. Uh, uh, STL, you got your main and backup audio. So all of those kind of things are brought into the remote control system 
And these boxes here now, they report really back to the system. It's right here, the, the software system. And this guy could be anywhere that your network can send the packets. So in the new world like I'm in, <clears throat> I'm looking at putting this in my studio building and these at transmitter sites on their own. This is the old antenna switching system. And as we modified it, we took stickers on it because we knew it, its time was limited. But you've got a transmitter uh, and a transmitter and a transmitter. So three transmitters. So you've got all of this switching happening through this, which was hand built. The whole of all of this thinking and logic is now inside this box, right? Yep. So on this guy, we've got three transmitters, a dummy load, and two antenna. And so that box actually physically controls like the, the connections yeah, the switches in these here. switches. Yep. I do see a few interesting things over here. I see the, uh, the old analog AM meter. Yeah, still a very valuable tool. Yep. Looking at your modulation. And uh, in AM, you can actually go higher than 100%. But yeah, because you're actually you're modulating the, the yeah. entire signal. Yeah, you're, you're going up. But when you go too low, you hit zero, and that's what would be the negative modulation. So on, on an FM, one because you had one of these in the Super Tower video, but it was just kind of staying the same, right? Yes. So well, we just... yeah, the, 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 uh, it depends on the format and everything else, but <laughs> FMs are also licensed at 75 uh, kilohertz modulation, which would be 100%. So you'll see those will hang around 100% when it's music, and processed, you'll see the needle like that. But when it's a talk show, you'll still see yeah, it. Yeah, so this is literally the speech that we're seeing. Yeah, we're seeing So that's it. the AM signal. Yes. That's and you can see that on here. Yes. This is a digital version of this. Yeah. So you can get a lot of the, you get a lot more information from here uh, than you can from here. And this probably gives you remote control. Remote, remote, uh, remote over IP, remote web monitor. interface. So this one, it's a web you set up a camera a to view it, but that one you just, jack right into it yes I mean how often do you see an analog oscilloscope on a crash card like yes that? the lab the lab card this is you roll it from transmitter to transmitter take the readings you need to uh, roll it back out of the way when you're done as we're heading out of here too I saw there's there's two of these things up here what are these guys yeah so these are the air handlers for the uh, heating and cooling of which heating is not as needed as you might think but you do <laughs> for that part of the building but not for this room if we wanted heat we could get it uh, but these are two systems, A and B, they're completely in independent. Uh, we do have over there on the wall, you see that case? Yep. Uh, there is a, uh, uh, it does switch systems, so every week it switches as, you know, one is the main and the other is the backup. So we got a differential temperature there so that they both get kind of evenly worked. That's the garage door, so, so uh, you can see the safety, uh, the safety thing is that you're smart and you don't walk out open doors. <laughs> but if I open this here, it probably set off an alarm. <laughs> but uh, there you go. Hey, look, it's the outside. Yep. And what's cool is you can stand here and inspect that tower with a with a uh, binoculars. You need to stand stand here, inspect the tower, check the lights. So right outside the uh, transmitter room. There's the stairs from the front entrance, but there's another whole studio here. It's actually like an emergency backup studio. Uh, we have a little area in there. We could have news people in that room. Oh yeah, uh, there's a board operator in here. There's a little newsroom at the transmitter site. Yeah, That's a little crazy. newsroom. And look at this uh, old blueprints or something for a yeah, signage. Yeah, so you, yeah, you do. Like you could see what they were doing when they built the place, uh, even though it was out and really out in the country when they built it. They did some beautiful stuff, nice touches. And if they have it here, you can see this building, actually in these uh, concrete pillars, they have uh, grounding, uh, either wire or strap, I don't remember. So this whole building is like a Faraday screened cage. But you wouldn't know that unless you looked at all of the drawings like these and found the uh, drawings for the concrete work. So you can see- There's the guy wires. Yeah, 180 radials, every oh, two that's degrees. The tower. Okay. It's the tower. 180 we go all around here so that's what they did they go the uh, base of the tower copper screening and they and the uh, guy wires so yep. that's an aerial view yep so this is this is where we are in the building yep and the line is now underground mm -hmm. and the tower is here and there's radials all the way around it yep 1938 huh. so that tower that's, was moved to st louis from chicago that's an actual blueprint so this is this is that newsroom from the other yeah. side <laughs> here's another 
Yeah, little there's little a flashable. That's just because of cool. That's for the effect. <laughs> if you that's, flip it that up, was so. the uh, the backup studio, and then this is a backup newsroom, right? With its own console. And, uh, my goodness, there's yeah. you could have a, another whole studio here. Yeah, too. you could. You could have a whole, or you could have an FM here and an AM in there, and that kind of thing. So yeah, it's all all possible. There's boxes full of MREs, so you could really live out here for a little while at least. Yeah. yeah. All right, and finally we have a real workshop. Yeah, this is one of the fun rooms. It's probably the most fun room in this building for me. <laughs> <laughs> you, got, you got batteries today, and it's yeah. still in use. That's the best thing about a workshop is yeah. this one. And look at that. There's an old, an old cone speaker up there. Does every tower site that you go to have a workshop like uh, this? No. With Some the, of the workshops are the back seat of my car. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, no, none of them, they, they're not as well uh, outfitted. Again, you know, you've got the grinding wheel with the stand, but... I'd never buy that now at a site, but I would have a grinding wheel if I had a site this big with mm -hmm. this much to maintain. This is the most famous meter of my life. Everyone who still has one working, uh, man, am I mine had one. You had one of those. I had in one. Our you house. probably remember as a kid. Yeah, I had one. That was the meter that I learned on. The meter. Yeah, the, the Simpson 260. Loved it. A screw for every. Yeah, this is every uh, generation. Up you know, here. 60, 70 years of collecting screws and organizing them. Uh, different people have done that over the years. So every big project, you can see some of the things that came out, went in, uh, extra parts purchased, some for spare. And you, you got a history of speakers here too. It looks like that one was an original to the site up there. Oh yeah. And then you got some JBL monitors up there. Yeah, the JBLs there. came out of the FM studios. They even, the JBLs have the uh, Y2K yeah, sticker and yeah, easy yeah, communications. That's, yep, that's, <laughs> they came out when we moved Many moved ownerships out. ago. How many of you guys have a fuse holding organization like you see at the store? <laughs> yeah. If you need electrical parts, you know, you got to have electrical. It's like a whole Home Depot in here. We used to use these to wire, you know, to do oh, yeah. uh, wire numbers. For labeling. Labeling, yeah. I remember using one of those. You can see here, there's a bunch of them in there. Thank you to Camwex and to uh, Odyssey. Yes. For letting us come out and, and check out the tower site. Yeah, it was wonderful. So we're back at home. Uh, we forgot to mention a couple interesting things. I, you have a picture up on your screen there. Can you explain what is happening here? Yeah, this is the 10 kilowatt frog. So uh, I was at the studio one day, we kept going off the air, come back up and I was raising it. You hit around 10 kilowatts, snaps off the air again. I went out to the site, looked all around the inside of the building, looking for the problem. And uh, right here is a frog who is in full stretch leap and snap and he was electrified and fried pretty quickly but it took several transmitter restarts to clear that problem <laughs> to really dry him out yeah <laughs> and then it, that, that wasn't the only frog story i've heard from out on this tower site there's yes there's this little fella here so when you go to sit down to go you don't want to see that there <laughs> i flushed him down like any good engineer would <laughs> <laughs> he he's came right back out. In the septic tank. <laughs> came right back out. Guys like this fella, they, they find a way in in the basement. Not quite as uh, big as it might look, but they grow big fast what do you when do they eat with, the frogs. When you find one of these things and you're like going out there to fix something, what's your reaction? I try the here snakey snakey thing, holding the frog in front. Of, no, no, it's uh, usually most of them are dead. By the way, most of them are. Uh, by the time you get there, they're going to be slithered away. Uh, so what you find is that they found something to eat they shouldn't have, and they <laughs> died. So this is a little, uh, this little uh, crawdads. We call them crawdads, crawfish, whatever. But every once in a while, the water is right there for so long that they would, these would just be there around in the areas around the tower or uh, off the tower out in the field. And uh, this one, I'm guessing, was probably a dinner or something for one of the flying animals or animals that. Or somehow it crawled up the tower, touched or it, crawl, zapped itself, <laughs> it crawled and fell up back the into tower. the gravel. 